What's up guys, today we're gonna save a wedding first kiss photo. I know some people would be against this somehow because the whole point of wedding is capturing the moment but me myself I've been sharing some weddings recently and I realized how hard is it and how hectic and chaotic everything is going on when you're holding the camera in a wedding there's a lot of people trying to shoot with the phone so you always have to reframe yourself and then you move from shooting in that angle into shooting in another angle where the lighting is completely different so you have to adjust your settings really quickly you have to switch to burst mode and then back to normal so it's really chaotic and hard so sometimes what happens is something like that where someone misses the right or the perfect moment in shooting the first kiss photo but because there's always the photoshop hustler to save the day the first kiss photo is not gone so what happened is that that photographer took the couples in a different place he took the perfect first kiss photo and he sent me the image and I'm gonna show you now exactly how we blended the two images from something like this into something like that so let's get started so the first thing is I'm gonna launch my Photoshop and I'm gonna drag the two photos. When the photographer send you the photos in RAW, it's really, really better because you have more information to play with. So the first thing I'm gonna look at, we have the two images here. Let's expand this. So we have the two images here. And you can see now this one is more bluish than this one. This one has more yellow and green. This one has more blue. So I'm going to try to match this one into that one. As you can see here, he missed the like the kiss photo and he liked this one more. So I'm going to add some yellow to the image just a little bit until it looks kind of similar. I guess it is kind of similar. As you can see here, you see the darkest spots on his suit it's not super dark but here when you look at the suit it's so dark it's going all the way into like the shadow so i'm gonna open the shadows just a little bit so we balance it with the other one this is i st i still believe it's too blue or maybe it's balanced just a little bit more yellow i'm gonna add and finally i believe like the ears the face became so much of like uh, purple so i'm gonna just bring a little bit the purples down and add some green to the image so i guess now we balance the color somehow let's look at the dress it's gonna show us the brightness i believe the dress here and there is the same brightness here it's just a little bit more bright so i'm just gonna bring the highlights just slightly down and i guess we're good to go let's open both Images. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to just like image rotation flip it horizontal so that they are both Matching the same thing now what I have to do is a very very good selection And this is like the boring part in Photoshop. I do it with the pen tool I just take the pen tool and I just keep pressing clicks all around the image until I reach the desired result so I'm gonna skip this part or just speed it forward for the sake of your time Guys, a quick tip, if you can't see the difference between this white and that white while editing the photo, just do your laptop screen like that and look at it, you're gonna see the white much better. And as we're done with our selection, I'm just gonna right click, make selection, make sure it's a little bit feathered, 0.5 maybe, and add a layer. So now we have our good clean selection. Let's drag it onto the other file we have. It's not being dragged, I don't know why. Let's drag it again. And let's match the size. Let's put the feed the same size, lower the opacity, and then control T and match the size so nothing looks off or different so let's close this 
for now and let's work on the photo okay what i want to do here is i want to try to get rid of them in a clean way that doesn't affect the image so i'm gonna see where this tree is going it's going somewhere here so i'm gonna do a selection something like that and then i'm gonna create a new layer then let's take the clone stamp make sure we're sampling current and below and then i'm gonna try to get rid of the bottom area try to sample like from different places and with different opacities so that things somehow blend nicely together and i guess we're good with that bottom part i guess it won't work let's just try to select the tree trunk something like that and now i want to clone a tree but in this case if i keep cloning from this tree it's gonna look repetitive so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the tree further away and i'm gonna try to clone from it so we have some sort of variation in the cloning and we can put this one down and if the edges looks fake or anything we can just blur them using like the blur tool blur the edges and i guess it needs some darkening something like that and okay we're good so i'm gonna select it again and select the floor again and then Control shift i to invert selection so now i'm trying to get rid of the man himself so this will work by clone stamping and erasing clone stamping erasing also you can do it in like a creative way where you can take a grass brush i have here some sort of a, like a grass brush and i can clone with it so that it's more looking like it's some sort of a foliage or different looking grass and we can do the same with the lady here and just cloning clone stamping from like a far away place and we destroyed that tree back there so i'm just gonna erase using the eraser some parts so we bring it back and as you can see, this is like the before, the after, we got rid of them. Uh, I don't like this the sharp edge. So just try to get rid of any sharp edges. Everything should look smooth. And now it's time to re-add them again. So the first thing is the positioning. I'm going to position them something like that. This green is so strong, so I'm just going to use saturation. Link it. Go to the yellows and the greens. Make sure I'm targeting yellows, greens, and desaturate a little bit. Control I so it's not affecting the whole image. And then using a white brush, I'm just going to mask it back onto those areas down there. So before, after, we just tone down these greens a little bit. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is we need to start like uh, making those. L let's keep that uh, for the end. For now, let's try to match their color with the existing color we have. I believe this area is too dark, so I'm just going to create a curves adjustment, brighten everything, control I, make sure it's linked, and then using a white brush, what I'm going to do and low opacity, I'm just going to bring some brightness from that curve here and there. Okay, now the, oh, the, there is still problem. It's not like they're not well blended at all. So what I need to do is, I believe they are so faded, like, look at their head, it's so gray, it should be black, look at this guy, the, like, the blacks here are much stronger, so I'm gonna add a curves adjustment, make sure it's linked, and then I'm gonna take the black point and just move it just a little bit, and the white point just a little bit, so now I increase the contrast somehow. Now the, the suit looks good, but his head still doesn't look the way I want it. So I'm going to add another curves adjustment. Now I'm going to darken everything. Make sure it's linked. Then I only want it to affect the head. So control I and using a white brush, I'm just going to paint it over his head. Let's lower the opacity. And I'm going to paint it over the top area of his head. I'm going to also look if there is other areas that look somehow faded or need some sort of shadow and her hair and this area needs uh, to be deleted 
That's why I always say doing a clean cut is very important. In my case, I was like doing, I was going really fast just for the sake of the tutorial because I believe cutting is really, really boring. So when I'm repeating it in a tutorial, I just go th through it really fast. Okay, now I like everything, but I still believe their skin tones lack some sort of a pop. So I want them to have a little bit of color. We're in an, some sort of an orange environment. I want to give them a little bit of a punch. So I'm going to do it using the vibrance. I'm just going to add some vibrance to the photo and then control I and using the white brush, I'm just going to bring it back into their faces and their skin just a little bit. Okay, I guess we're almost there. We still need just a little tweaks. And we're done. Uh, his hair is like an issue for me. So I'm just going to clone stamp it away. So I'm going to do it on a new layer. Clone stamp. Make sure it's current and below. Make sure you're just on a normal brush. And I'm just going to clone stamp some parts of his hair. And just stamp them on the areas where it's like too bright. Where I don't like it. Something like that. So we just like make his hair look more natural and more like better color. What's that area? I guess we should have gave like some more time to the cloning at the beginning because as you can see, we can see flaws every now and then. Also this area, I need to blur it just a little bit. Okay, I guess we're in a very good spot so far. The last thing I'm gonna give them pop, but with brightness, not with color. So I'm gonna add curves and I'm gonna just make sure the points are steady except the highlights. I wanna make the highlights just pop out a little bit then control i again and i'm just gonna bring back that to their faces with low opacity so the face is kinda contrasty and popping out a little bit so now we have them like somehow popping out the last thing let's group this whole thing together let's call it bride groom two more things missing the first one is that this is not blending with the grass below so i'm gonna add a layer mask then you are gonna use th there is this brush that's uh, that already comes with photoshop but i don't like it i have an, an another one which is uh, that one i'm gonna show you how it looks like this is how it looks like, something like that. You can find all my brushes for free on brusheasy.com. You have to download it from the source. I can't give them away because I do not own them. So I'm gonna, with low opacity, I'm just gonna do some sort of like brushing away some parts of the dress here and there. Also some parts of his shoe. So I'm doing it with low opacity from far away. Then I'm going to make a strong opacity, 100%. But this time I'm going to do it from a very close distance. And another one will be, I'll make it really big. And from far away, I'm just going to do some sort of like grasses. So it's like some sort of variation because the grass isn't always regular. So you have to make some sort of variation so it looks good you can also try using let's say another brush and try mixing some brushes together because like we said it's always random when it comes to grass so we don't want to have something that's looking always the same and the final thing we still have to do is shadow so as you can see here we have some sort of like even light direction and everywhere but if we look at the first photo we have some sort of shadow below them so I'm going to add some shadow below of them. I'm going to do that by adding a curves adjustment layer below the layer. And I'm going to darken everything. Then control I. Then I'm going to take a brush. This time it's a round brush. But then I'm going to distort it somehow like that. So that it's matching the area where I want the shadow to be. But let's lower the opacity. And let's darken the areas below of them. And if you want to have a good shadow, you always have to layer it. You can't have good shadow from only one layer. So I'm going to do the same again. Control I. Link, uh, no, it's, this one is not linked. Just control I. This time I'm just going to go just below his feet. And just below the dress. Not like a global one. 
And finally, let's do a global one. Control I. This time it's gonna be like just a normal brush. And let's just do a, a global darkening of the whole area. And the best thing is that you can always tone down the opacity if you want to. Let's tone down the opacity. So now this is like the shadow we created. You can see it. And now we're done with like trying to blend everything together. I like to push that even further by adding another layers on top of everything. So, so I like to do the curves. This is the way I like to do it. I pull the blacks just a little bit up, then pull the shadows down. This kind of helps blend everything together better. Then I'm going to add a gradient map. I'm going to choose this one. I believe this one warm tones looks good with like a first kiss image. And I'm going to bring the opacity to 5%. Then I'm going to do two more copies. One will be color and one will be soft light. But the soft light, I will increase the opacity just a little bit. So that this is like the, what we did now, the layers we added. So now it's time to hold control alt shift. E, the most important hotkey in Photoshop. It merges everything into a new layer. So we can go to filter, camera, raw filter, and we have everything now. I'm gonna use the radial filter and I'm gonna add a lot of yellow along with some dehaze and along with some magenta. And I'm just gonna make sure like some yellow color is coming from above the image. I believe it's too strong. Let's tone it down just a little bit. I'm going to lower the highlights as well so with the other color is more visible. So now we have some sort of like yellow color coming from above. Let's do the opposite which is blue coming from below. So I'm going to darken just a little bit because I want the blue to be dark. I want this area not to attract the eyes. It's, a, it's supposed to be dark. So I'm just going to darken it using the highlight curves exposure and add some blue to it so that the eyes are more and the, and the audience. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want like the eyes to be attracted more to where the couples are. So I'm gonna take the radial filter. I'm gonna add some clarity, add some dehaze, add sharpness, add texture, open up the shadows a little bit, increase the contrast, increase the brightness, add some yellow, and I'm gonna draw around them just a circle just to make them more punchy let's add even more saturation and let's zoom out the final thing i'm gonna add a little bit of vignette and vignette again and um, i guess the whole photo needs some bit of color so i'm gonna increase the vibrance to give it some life and let's press p to see the before after before after you can see the dramatic difference we created and this is the final image i'm pretty sure if you show this to anyone no one will suspect that this image is photoshop so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'm looking forward i adjusted my setup so that i'm shooting while i'm working on the computer so that i can create more tutorials for you guys so if you have any requests please write them in the comment section down below and until next time